been months of staying at home by school pupils in Lagos State owing to the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the incident of the lockdown in the state, schools have remained under lock and key with no specific time frame for the reopening of academic activities. However, some education experts have applauded the state government for the online and conventional media platform used to teach pupils while they're at home. To some others, the exercise only covers a fraction of the populace and therefore not seen as delivering on its primary objective. But how has the Lagos state government been able to manage the lockdown regarding schools and, of course, the process of reopening these learning centers, if any? Joining us now to deliberate on all this is Falasha Dea Adifisayo, Lagos State Commissioner for Education. Welcome to the program. Uh, good morning. Good morning, man. And welcome to the program. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me here. And, and good to see you again. Thank you. <laughs> right, you were here in January. Yes, uh, I was. I, I just want to ask this. The uniformity of this, you know, teaching aids. I know the government is doing a lot as regards the radio teaching aid, which I've heard on a couple of radio stations and online. But to a large extent, it doesn't still reach the mass populace. And I'll give you a clear instance. A child in Makoko. How is a child in Makoko reached in all of this? And how, how, how is it possible for them not to miss out, using the words of Donald Trump, bigly on academics? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a tough one, actually, because uh, we accept the fact that it cannot cover every child. And so what we started doing, initially we thought that, oh, radio, well, radio is mass, and it does cover a lot more children than uh, television and online. And so when we started broadcasting, we now started collecting data that how many children are actually learning with this medium. And we found that uh, there was still a number that had no access to radio at all. And so one of the things that we've been doing is raising funds ourselves. We, are, we, we set up like a kind of a crowdfunding medium and people have been crowdfunding. It started from my office, my staff, my colleagues in the office, and now we've gotten about uh, 25,000 radios and we started giving them out. Because we know there are many communities where the children just have no access to radios. So I think that's one of the first things that we, one of the things that we are having to do now. But we do know that the radio does reach a, large, a larger number than any other distance learning module, uh, uh, methodology for now. Well, Honorable Commissioner, how soon will schools uh, reopen in Lagos State? I mean, elsewhere in the world, South Korea, the United Kingdom, schools are gradually uh, reopening. Uh, what are the considerations of the Lagos State government? And is there any conversation ongoing with parents who are major stakeholders in this matter? Let me start with parents. The major conversation... The major thing we are reading from so many parents is their own children will not go to school. They cannot, uh, they, they, are, they are really fearful of sending their children physically. And so we've got to convince them that whatever we are doing is safe enough for the children. So we too have ongoing conversations in the background, uh, working with the development organizations and so on to develop protocols to ensure that when schools open, that the pandemic will not take on a different coloration. You know that even now, watching the pandemic, and I, I don't want to make any predictions, I'm not a medical person at all, but from my discussions with the medical people, it's, it's not getting better. And if it's not getting better, we don't want to expose children to this danger. People keep telling me, oh, children don't have a bad... Uh, they don't have bad reaction to COVID. It just, they just have mild symptoms. But that's not always the case. Just like for adults, some adults are asymptomatic and some, so, some lose their lives. Some apparently healthy, young-looking men and women lose their lives. And so we've got to be very careful to ensure that our schools are ready to implement these protocols before we open them. So these conversations are ongoing. I cannot give you a definite date for resumption, and I'm so sorry to have to say that, mainly because the, we, we cannot, we are not sure that at this time it will be safe for children to go to school and be in close. You cannot stop, managing social distancing with children is not easy at all. And, and you know we are social and gregarious people. 
for me, for many months now, I have not hugged anybody except one or two people. And that makes me sad because what you like to, we like to go around hugging, greeting, and so on. Not to talk of children. They like to play with themselves. And so managing their social distance uh, <coughs> behavior is going to be quite challenging for schools. And we are working with private schools. We are working with uh, development partners to develop the protocols. The private schools, we had a meeting with them. They gave us their own uh, protocols, which, you know, all of us are thinking similarly. I mean, it's the same thing. Distancing, mask wearing, washing hands before school. Schools, should they go to school every day? How long should they spend in school? And, and, and so on and so on. So these are all conversations that are happening. Thank you very much, ma'am. No apology necessary. I'm sure it's a comfort to all the parents in Lagos State that such painstaking care has been taken before you come to a decision about when you're going to open schools. Mm -hmm. So now I'd like to ask you a question referring to the Lagos State agenda themes. And one of the pillars of that is education and technology, which has now been married in such a spectacular way with the COVID-19 pandemic. What lessons have been learned that you're going to apply to the future of education in Lagos State? Mm -hmm. You see, this COVID uh, pandemic, it, it threw up certain things. It threw up the need, honestly, to see technology for what it can do in education. Before now, people had been leery. And it's not peculiar to Nigeria. If you study it across the world, people, educationists have generally been slower than other parts of the economy in buying into the integration of technology into their productivity. And so when this happened, clearly we had no choice. Of course, we are operating, like I said, on radio and TV. That's not the optimum. We want to go for the optimum. The optimum, because we know the, 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 the disadvantages of radio, there are quite a few. Like, we are not going to be able to get uh, immediate feedback. Our feedback is kind of third, third, in the third person. Our feedback requires a lot of effort. It's not immediate, like I said. So we have to go for that medium that will ensure that we are able to see whether our children are learning or not. And obviously, the best medium is for us to go online. And so while we have partnered, I mean, we are buying into the federal government's we uh, website, so we asked our students to go on to it. But we found that less than 5% of the students in our public schools have access to uh, uh, either devices or data. At least to go to the internet, you must have a proper device. To go to the internet, you must have the, uh, you must have access to data. And so, because of affordability, they just might not. So these are some of the things that we've been looking at. That how do we, how do we ensure that we get learning to every child? Like for instance, if I look at it now, if we open schools, it's quite clear. Look, the pictures you are showing on screen, we're not going to do that anymore. We won't be able to have assembly. We will not, uh, the uh, classrooms will, will have to maintain social distance. So maybe not all the children will come to school at the same time. And so they are going to, children are going to have long periods at home, longer periods at home than usual. So what is going to happen when they are at home? And so we've got to ensure that learning goes on all the time. And learning that engages them, learning that gives us adequate feedback. And that's one of the greatest lessons that this has taught us. I'm very excited about what it has done because we, we are forced into a mode where we really have no choice but to integrate technology into everything we do in education. All right, still on that line of uh, technology, uh, is there any possibility that you might be talking to the telecoms network for very highly subsidized data? And I don't know how this will work. It's just an idea, just uh, a brainwave that is coming. Highly subsidized data for these children and how you know, they can scale. And secondly, the last time you were here in January, you talked about the fact that, that there was uh, a scheme where you gave students TAB or you were planning to give students TAB. Yeah. Uh, how is that going now? Well, uh, I don't know. There, there, there was this um, donation by First Bank. Uh, we, we're actually working with a group of donors. And right now, we have quite a number of TABs, uh, devices that we are going to give our students. We are working on many more. Uh, the, the, you know, the cost is quite remarkable, you know, to get the devices. Because even before you go to the telecoms companies, you must have a device by which they will access the Internet. So first of all, we worked on the tabs. And getting the tabs, the cost implication of getting the tabs, we have close to, like, th over 350,000 children 
in junior secondary and senior secondary together about six seven hundred thousand children so with that kind of data you know that we've got to really get a large number of tabs so we've, been, we've got quite a number now and uh, we've 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 uh, found the most you know we are going to start with the areas of greatest need and so we're going to start giving out to the penultimate class in school the areas of greatest need we are going to start giving them tabs We've, start, we've launched, we commissioned with First Bank. I don't know whether, I'm sure your TV was there that mm. day at Government House, yeah, where we commissioned uh, 20,000 tabs. And immediately after that, people just started uh, buying in and joining us. So we've got a number of tabs now, the, a number that is good enough for us to start giving out. Well, let me ask you about private schools that you referred to earlier. Um, I think it was in April or was it early May that the Lagos State Government complained about private schools in Lagos trying to uh, resume classes online uh, for the third time and charging tuition. And I think the Lagos State Government said, look, you can't charge tuition. But you will find that the uh, private schools are in a much better position to at least continue with online teaching, particularly for students in JS3 and SSS, SS3. Now, what is the situation uh, in that regard uh, between the ministry and also the private schools uh, operating in uh, Lagos State? Well, uh, we, the great problem uh, uh, is not a problem. The issue really were the parents. The parents who felt that they should not pay third term fees since what they were getting was not really third term but a part of what they would normally have paid for. And so we sat down with schools. We discussed in general. It was not a decision that we just took. And don't forget, when you talk about schools, we have 18,000 Private, primary, private schools in Lagos. The schools that were really involved in online learning are maybe about 200. And uh, therefore, sitting down and talking with them, we agreed that, we agreed with parents, are they providing a service? They said, yes. Are your children enjoying the service? Yes. Are they learning? Yes. Then you have to pay them for that service. And so that's, the, that's been our policy right from day one, that you pay for that service. And most of the private schools now, have they been running since then? They've been running their online school since then, which is fine, and they are charging the parents for the service that they are offering. The content that they are delivering is basically third-term content in many instances, just like we too. Because the way things are going, and I'm trying very hard not to make any controversial comments, but the way things are going, the third term is not happening very, very soon. And so most of us have, even on our own stations and on our own uh, um, online uh, media, we are also delivering and providing third-term content. Because the beauty of, of online learning, of course, is that you are not now in that silo of, uh, you know, like I put it somewhere, third term, first term, second term, these are artificial constructs that just make it easier for schools to be able to put learning into bands. But learning is learning. And if you are able to um, ensure that learning keeps going on, you don't need to put it into any bands. And so the schools are teaching children. I, we know they are. We know they are charging uh, fees for this service, which is, since they are expending money, they are paying uh, teachers' salaries and so on. So we're quite fine with it. Thank you, ma'am. You have spoken of the government's plans to give palliatives to private schools, the proprietors and proprietresses, and the school teachers. What informed that policy, and has it begun? We were thinking about it, but you know, nobody knew this thing would go on for so long. Honestly, when the closure happened, there were people who felt two, three weeks to be back in school. But you can see it's months now. And uh, what we've done is, uh, I, can't, I can't call it, I don't know what you mean by palliatives, because uh, people, I, I think they are uh, equating palliatives to giving them food and things like that. But support is what I think we can do best. And one of the things we've done is that we've entered into an MOU with the bank so that the bank can support them with some funds at, at, at low interest rates during this period. We've almost concluded, we, we've got to the MOU stage, and we're also talking to other institutions that they should please support them. We've talked to an institution that is offering uh, their students uh, laptops and, uh, you know, uh, uh, their teachers and students' laptops payable over a uh, long stretch and so on. So these are all the things that we're saying. We're always talking to them. We always have meetings with them. And so we are working together. As for palliatives and so on, 
we want to give the associations palliatives. We'll stop giving out palliatives for now, but once we resume, we'll give uh, school associations as much as we can give them. But again, how will it get to the individual teachers? That worries us. Right. Uh, still on the teachers. Isn't this time of the lockdown a great time to be able to have refresher uh, online courses for the teachers? Because we, we talk about the students a lot, but we don't talk about the teachers that constantly need to be trained and retrained. What's your say about that? Do you have anything as regards to that for them? You see, teaching, uh, the, the most important factor in any school system is, is the quality of teaching and learning. The most important relationship in any school system is what goes on in the classroom between the teacher and the people. Every other thing is just supposed to support that relationship. So for us in Lagos State, we are determined that our teachers are going to provide the best possible service. We've been training and tra I don't know how many training programs we've done. We, uh, right now, even for them to go and be doing the radio lessons and online lessons, we train them on how to deliver, because it's a different medium from what they are used to, how to deliver online, how to prepare your lesson notes, how to deliver, how to, uh, and many of them work, you see, they work beyond the radio stations. Most of our teachers have their own WhatsApp groups, their own Telegram groups, where they have one-on-one -on -one relationships with their students, sending work to them, giving them homework, marking the homework. Some of our districts are sending out um, worksheets. And so we have to train them on how to use this different medium. And again, we entered into a relationship with Microsoft, and they are training 18,000 of our teachers free. Now, what they are training them on is way beyond Excel, Word, and PowerPoint, which is fine, and they should know all those. They are training them on all those. They are also training them on how to work with Microsoft Teams, how to deliver t uh, training to their students, how to teach, how to, how to even put their students in teams and in groups and work with them collaboratively uh, online. And so we've been doing a lot by, of course, we've done other types of training, like um, scenario planning during this period. How do you plan for various scenarios? What if the children don't come for more than four hours? What if they come every day? What if they come every other day? So how do we address all these? So there's a lot going on in the background. There's a lot going on with the teachers. They, we are training them. They are also training themselves. They are getting better and better each day. Anyway, Honorable Commissioner, well, I mean, one of the points that have been made by commentators is that if there is any lesson that we have learned from COVID-19, is that certain uh, aspects of our lives need to be especially focused on. Um, education is one of those areas. Health is another. Now, what's the thinking within the context of the theme strategy uh, in Lagos State, education being part of that strategy. Uh, what, what, what is the plan post-COVID-19? What are the challenges also that you have faced as Lagos State Commissioner, and what should we expect uh, post-COVID-19? I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask a request of you. Split the question into two. So my own challenge. Okay, everybody is thinking ahead. Uh, what are the plans? <laughs> thank uh, you. Within your uh, ministry. Okay, thank you. Uh, we too are thinking ahead. Immediately this happened. Uh, normally, there were naysayers too that no, 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 no. The ch children will soon come back. Let's let let them stay at home. So, but once we started, uh, our teachers started distance learning and learning the skills. They too started enjoying it, and now we started. We had to sit down and say, look, post COVID, what is going to happen? We are going to change our habits. Absolutely going to change our habits. Like I said, we are not going to be having children doing things together for a while at least we are going to be maintaining social distancing we are going to possibly have staggered resumption we are possibly going to have things like every other day school or shifts so that means that the time spent in school is going to be reduced so we have to push a lot more things into distance learning and so I am envisaging and working with my staff, uh, we are envisaging what we've called the 21st century Lagos learning ecosystem. That there'll be, there could be a physical element, we don't know when that will happen. And when that happens, we now have to think of the other elements. Radio, online, cloud solution. We've been talking to people about a cloud solution that doesn't necessarily need the internet. Especially in our rural areas. Yesterday I was in uh, Epe, and parts of uh, Ebejuleki, 
where there are schools that are so far away and it's not that they don't even want to listen to radio. They, I don't know, they just don't get service. They don't, it's not that they don't want to use uh, the internet, they just don't have service. So how do we service such places? So a lot of planning and thinking around that is uh, ongoing. We are clear that when we resume, Teachers are going to have to change the way they teach. We are going to change the way we assess that learning is taking place. We are going to even have to build different types of relationships. And in our districts, we are buying uh, telephones for our teachers now. Uh, we are getting telephones for a group of guidance counselors because we know that during this period, children must be traumatized. They may be emotionally traumatized. They may have lost a parent. They may have seen a loved one die. You know, they may, they, even this staying at home is a shock to the system for many of them. So we, we've opened up uh, guidance counseling lines and they are phoning in to say, oh, uh, can I have a solution to my problem? It could be academic. It could be emotional. So we are working on all this. This is all part of what we are going to provide as the learning ecosystem that we are planning on. That's great to hear. I'd like to ask you two questions as well. The first one is that experts all over the world have been positing that this sort of lull in our traditional understanding of education is going to have a damaging effect for children like those you've just described who cannot access online learning for the rest of their lives. I've heard this several times. So I want to know if you also take such a fatalistic view of things or can they recover? It's not a fatalistic view. It's probably possibly true. Something can affect you all your life, but you can also be taught to address a, 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 a bad situation and, uh, you know, take, pick out the opportunities from a bad situation. So I think even though it might, I mean, even if you look at yourself, there are childhood incidents that will affect you for life, but you have the option to decide that I'm not going to allow this to determine my course in life. And so that's what I think we need to give our students, the resilience. And that's why we are doing the online, the telephone uh, guidance counseling part of things, so that we give them the resilience and the strength to just know that I'll soldier on. Things look hard now, but I will soldier on. But I don't, so I'm, I'm not sure, I don't, I, I, I believe it may affect for life, but I believe that one can be given the tools to manage that situation and rise from it. Thank you, ma'am. My second question is about the radio programs. Can we have more details? What are the topics being taught? What are the hours? What radio stations? Uh, the topics differ, of course, because in uh, what, what, uh, we have uh, Nigeria FM that does every, all of them do between 11 and 2 every day. So we have Nigeria FM and then we have uh, uh, Wazobia, Wazobia Radio and TV, which is for senior secondary, and Niger FM, which is for junior secondary. And if I might add, uh, for the junior secondary, we were, we, we, you know they do, they do a lot more subjects than secondary. And so we've just done most of the, 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 the core subjects of uh, math, English, social studies, and uh, civic, uh, sorry, basic, uh, basic science and civic studies. For senior school, we've done most of the uh, subjects in se senior secondary. Initially, we started with about eight. But when we saw that this thing was not coming to an end, we started including almost all the subjects that they're doing. So that every day, th there's, a le there's a timetable every week. It's not the same. So I can't tell you that this week, uh, today, this is so-so topic. But every week, we have a timetable that comes out that shows what we are going to teach for the week. Okay. Uh, real quickly, I, I want to talk about examinations. Have we been able to put a structure in place? Because it will still get to a point. If this continues for longer than expected, people will have to write examinations. And it's not a new thing. I mean, the likes of uh, Chief Awafem Awolo was studied via correspondence. And they wrote exams via that correspondence. Is there a possibility of that? Well, yes, school exams. Like I said, we, we, we have just started, one of our districts has just piloted the use of worksheets, where we are sending worksheets home and the students are set, and then we have a way of getting the worksheets back without violating the rules of uh, social distance. And uh, so that's one of the things that, uh, please pardon me, I think the mic fell off. Uh, that's one of the things that we are working on now, that, you know, at least... Let's assess, let's do CA, continuous assessment, even if we can't do a full end of uh, term summative test. 
And uh, what we are looking at is that we'll promote using CA, <coughs> continuous assessment. Because, you know, even though we have end-of-term tests, during the ter exams, during the term, we've always had tests. So first term, we must have had like about four or five CAs that culminated in the first term exam. Second term, even though we did not finish, we did, we did not do second term exams because we closed, I think, the Saturday, the Friday before second term exams started, we had already done about four or five CAs, depending on the school. And so we plan to use the CAs, amalgamate, uh, sum the CAs. If we resume in good time, do the second term exams and use that to promote them. Especially since we've done a lot of content on uh, third term. As for external exams like... Uh, uh, the Becker, that's the basic education exam. Again, we are, we are thinking about how we can possibly use CA to promote students. Because at this point, we, um, you know that we do have large populations in many of our public schools, and sitting them down for an exam might violate uh, the laws of social distance. Well, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner you. for Education, Lagos State. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning.